Hello, my name is Hugo Guerra and welcome to Hugo's Desk. Today, it's the first class we're going to actually have Nuke open. We're going to talk about Nuke's interface and what are node compositing, what are nodes, what is the node graph, what all these sections do. I do know that this is a bit alien for you guys because some of you are coming from After Effects, but believe me that this is much more simple than you think, as long as you know where to click. I also know that it's a bit of a boring subject, but I'm going to try to make it as interesting as possible. So let's just get on with it and let's start the class. This is the Nuke interface as we know it, and this is the default version. When you first install Nuke, this would be what you would see uh, normally. Now, Nuke is split by different pans. That's what they call a pan, which is each of these sections. So in this way, we have our viewer, which is where we're gonna see our footage. This is where we're gonna control the playback of everything we're doing. Uh, and here down here, we have what they call the node graph. And this is where you'll have all your nodes and you can actually have all of your composites in your tree of compositing. On this side, you have your properties. The properties is where all the settings for each of the nodes, that means every effect you're making, like a color space node or a color corrector or a merge node will show up on that side. But I'll show you in a minute. There's also other parts of the interface, like the curve editor, which you can actually have animation curves, the dope sheet, which is where you control your layers. It's like a it's kind of like a pseudo timeline. It's really not a timeline, but it has a lot of connections with After Effects timeline. So let's talk about the most important section, which is actually the node graph. So I'm going to bring in some footage so we can actually start looking at something. It's always easier to look at something for you to learn. So to bring in something into Nuke, you basically can do it out of three ways. You can either go in here to your uh, nodes. And as you can see on the side here, we have all of our nodes divided by categories. Now on the top category, we're going to talk about each category in a second. But on the top category, you can kind of see that we have a read and a write. And the read node is really the way that Nuke uh, calls what you would probably call in After Effects an import or an open. So that means a read is a way for you to import a piece of footage into your composite. This is not the save yet. This is just the reading. And as you can see, there's like a little uh, letter next to these two nodes. That means it's the shortcut. And so if you want, you can either press the read node to open up the actual uh, browser to search for footage, or you can also just go into your node graph, click on the node graph and press the R button. If you press the R button, it functions the same way as you click on the read node. The third way you can do to import footage is to actually bring the footage directly from an explorer. That means you can drag and drop footage. But let's start with the most common way, which is the read node. So I'm gonna click on the read node and I'm going to just randomly pick a plate for us to look at. Now, when I click on the read node, it's important for you to understand that this is the way Nuke introduces the files inside of Nuke. On one side, you have your shortcuts. So everything that you see on this side is basically the shortcuts for the main projects. As you can see, I have, I have a couple projects myself that I've been done shortcuts. And all these shorts can be deleted by hitting the plus button or the minus button, or you can edit them. So if you want to click on the shortcut, you can do so as well. On the bottom here, you have the most important thing, which is the actual physical path to go into a file. Now, Nuke is actually reading the files directly from the disk. So this is means that it's the scripting path to get into the folder, um, just like the old school computers used to have. The other thing as well that you have on the top here is you have your creator to new folders and you have, of course, the navigation. So if I go, for example, to footage, and these are all the footage, keep in mind that when you're navigating the folders of Nuke, like in this case, I am inside a hard drive called Cache and it's called Dropbox. And then the project is the online Nuke course assets to the footage. Now, this is exactly the same as when I look at the actual finder. So I'm gonna just go into the Explorer and show you. So as you can see here, I'm on my finder here and you can kind of see that it's volumes, cache, Dropbox, project, uh, online new course assets to the footage. And these are all my folders. Now, normally inside of Explorer or Finder, you just click and you just go through your files. Inside of Nuke, you kind of see the same thing, but you always see the scriptable version of the path, which is very useful for Python scripting, for example. One thing you should know is that Nuke does not behave like uh, uh, other applications. You don't double click to go into a folder. So if you, for example, if you want to go to the BBC Godly Notes folder, you just click once and it goes into it. And then as you can see, these are all the subfolders 
folders, then I click once again, and I go into that folder. Then I go and click one again, and then I go to that folder. So that's how it actually works. If I want to go back, you can either just remove that part from the path and go back, or, of course, you can still use the arrows here to go back to the folder or to go up the directory. So there's like back and up as well. At any time as well, you can also make a new folder if you would like. If you press this little button here, you can actually create a new directory. So if I just open this up and I just type temp, or just to piss everyone off, I can just call it new folder. <laughs> and I press o open. Now, as you can see, I've created a new folder. So now if I go back to my finder, you can see that now I have a new folder. If I want to do a shortcut, I just press the plus button. And as you can see here, it gives you a choice to edit your favorite. You can give it whatever name you want. So if you don't want hashtags, the actual folder path is also here. And then you have the option to have it on every type of browser that Nuke has, because Nuke has an image browser, a sequence browser, a project browser, it has all these type of browsers. So I'm going to make this shortcut on every browser if I would like to. I can also put a tip if I want to. That means that uh, if I over the mouse, it will tell me. So this is... Let's say here that I put new course folder. And I, I could put an icon, although I'm not doing that, but you could actually have an icon for the folder. You would just have to use a PNG or um, I believe a PNG only. I think it's only PNG that would work here. Press OK. Now, as you can see, I have my new folder here. And if I over the mouse over it, it tells me that it's a new course. That was the tool tip. At any time, I can click edit to change my favorite of that folder. And if I want, I can press minus and it will ask me, do you really want to remove this uh, from the folder? And I can say yes or no. So this is a great way for you to go directly into files and keep track of a favorite list if you're actually doing a project to avoid you always having to go to the same folder all the time. Now, I'm going to go in here and bring in some footage. Now, if you, for example, look at footage and how Nuke presents footage, you can kind of see that this is a sequence. We're going to talk about sequences and QuickTimes on a later class this week. So please go to that class and then you can watch it. But you will see that Nuke always groups the sequences. You see here it says BBC main ungraded version 1 version 1 shot 24. The hashtags represent the actual numbers of the file. And then you have .tpx and then it's from 1001 to 1058. Just going to go jump into Finder here really quickly and show you the exact same folder. So this is the folder that we're talking about. And as you can see, this is the actual file. So Nuke kind of groups. These are frames in DPX. You can kind of see that Nuke actually picked up this number, 1004, 1005, which is the frames of the sequence. And he has grouped them into hashtags. And then it kind of represents the frame range down here. Basically tells you when it was done and also the total size of the sequence. At any time, if you do not want to see this sequence as a full sequence, you can press this button here called Sequences. If I press on it, now I can see the individual frames. So now I'm actually looking at this just like if it was the finder. So keep that in mind. If you do want to bring a specific frame only, you have to unclick the sequence and then actually pick just that frame. If you want to bring the whole sequence, you press the sequence and actually select it. Now, please note also that you have a filter tab here. If you want to basically remove some files to when you were basically on a very messy folder and you want to localize just certain parts. The other thing that you should also know is that you have an open button. So if I press open, I, of course, bring in the footage into my node graph. But I'm going to delete that for a second and just show you another thing. You can also bring in multiple files. That means that if I select this one, I can now press next. And I can now go to another folder. Let's say I go to this folder, select this one, and now press Next. And then if I go to another folder, I can also select this one, and I can press Next, and then I can press Open. And now I have three files coming into Nuke and not just one. So that's one way of you picking certain files. You just kept pressing Next, 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 and you get a bunch of files. Now I'm going to delete this again by hitting the delete button. And I'm going to show you also how to bring files using the actual uh, Explorer or Finder, and you can drag files into Nuke. Now, to be able to drag files, of course, you have to go to a browser. And here's a couple of limitations for this. So 
Imagine that I wanted all these files in my composite. I can't just drag the entire footage folder. This is because it will only, you see, it gives me a lot of errors and the errors are made because it's bringing a subfolder and Nuke cannot recognize subfolders from folders. So that means that when you drag, you have to make sure there's a sequence inside that folder. That means instead of uh, dragging this folder, I need to drag the folders that actually have sequences inside of them. That means if I select these five plates, for example, I drag them over and now I hit the five plates that I was trying to open as well. So these are the three ways of importing files. Don't forget, you can either press the R button and opens up the browser by doing this. You can drag the files by using the Finder or the Explorer and drag them directly into your node graph, or you can basically go in here to your read node, click read, and opens the browser as well. So those are the three ways of bringing in footage. So now that I have footage inside of Nuke, you might have noticed that, for example, I had the full screen on my node graph. Now, this is because anything in Nuke, as soon as you press the space bar, becomes a full screen image. This is an actual really cool way of you actually controlling and working inside a script in detail. We'll talk about that more in a second. But anything in Nuke can be done like that. For example, if I want to see the full screen of the viewer, I can also press the space bar and click the space bar again to go back. Same goes for the properties. If I press the space bar, I see the properties. If I press the save bar, go back. If I go to the curve editor, I can do the same with the curve editor. So everything in Nuke, as long as you click on it, you can actually go to it in full screen, which is very advantageous. Basically, if you have a second monitor or if you actually want to just basically go into detail. But let's look into this thing here. I press the space bar. These are five plates that I brought in. And as you can see, Nuke brings these basic thumbnails into Nuke. Now, what do these thumbnails tell you? These thumbnails are read nodes. Read nodes inside of Nuke or import nodes so that you can import the footage. Basically, as you saw, they all came in like on top of each other. As soon as they come in like that, you can just basically select them all and press the L button. Most of the shortcuts in Nuke are linked to the word that means that shortcut. So basically line, which is to put all the files in line, would be the L button. So if I press L, it puts them all in line. Now I'm just going to drag one over here and show you what this thumbnail has. Now the thumbnail basically gives you a lot of information. First of all, it gives you the caching information, which we will talk about in detail a bit more later. It also gives you a small thumbnail of the actual sequence we're looking at. It also tells you the name of the actual file, it's just like you saw on Finder in an Explorer. Also gives you information of how many channels we have. As you can see, we have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And that is actually the container of this file. If this file had an alpha channel, you would see a little white box here, as you will see later. And as you can see, you have like a little arrow here, and this is basically the arrow for the node. This is the way you have to connect to other things inside the script. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I want to start by just showing you how to view this piece of footage. So I'm going to press the space bar again. The fastest way to view things inside of Nuke, there are actually two ways. You can either go into, again, the first menu we talked about, which is called the image menu. Every node in Nuke, everything in Nuke, by the way, can be seen as a tooltip. That means you can know what it does. Like if I over the mouse over that, it tells me image. If I over the mouse on this one, it tells me draw. If I over the mouse on this, it tells me time. So everything in Nuke, even here, if I do here, it tells me channels, layer to display in the viewer. If I put the mouse on this one, it tells me viewer process. This is our LUT. If I put it in here, it tells me display style of selected layer channels. If I put the mouse over this one, it tells me toggle gain between one. Uh, so this basically is the f-stop. If I go to Y, it tells me toggle gamma between one in the previous setting. So every time you get stuck inside of Nuke, I would just suggest for you to over the mouse and leave the mouse as it is, and you will immediately be greeted with a tooltip. If you want to see a piece of footage, you have two ways. You either go into the image here and press viewer. As you can see, 
inside my node, node script, I can click on it and just drag it anywhere I want. The same I can go, go to with the read node as well. And at any time, I can plug my footage into my viewer or unplug it and plug my viewer into my footage. So they're both the same thing, really. So, for example, if you want to see this piece of footage, you would do that. If you want to see that piece of footage, you would plug to that one. Of course, there's much faster ways of doing that. The fastest way is actually to select one of your read nodes and press one, and then it automatically connects to the viewer. If I select that one and I press one, it automatically selects to that viewer as well. And if I go to this one, it automatically goes to that viewer as well. So by pressing one, you can connect to the viewer. The other thing as well you can know is if I, del if I delete my viewer by pressing the backspace, I can then select a piece of footage and press one, and it automatically will attach a new viewer to it. So hence, that's why I was telling you that there are two ways to get a viewer. Now that we can see the footage, you can see the footage in the viewer. If I press spacebar by clicking first on the viewer and then spacebar, I can also see the full screen viewer. If I do spacebar again, I go back. Keep in mind that if I double click on this read node, you now get the preferences of this node. You can see on preferences, I have a lot of information. I have the path of the file. I have the localization policy, which we'll talk a bit later. I also have the frame range. I know that this file starts on 1001 and it finishes on 1058. You can see that my viewer is now currently on frame one, which is wrong. This is because I was importing and exporting footage and I was importing multiple files in, into Nuke. If I import just one file, if I have a fresh copy of Nuke and I import just one sequence, to it, the preferences of Nuke will attach itself to that file. But if I import multiple files, it will not really know what to do because maybe some of these files had better different ranges. I'm going to show you that by making a brand new script. So here we are on a brand new script that has nothing. I've just opened a brand new script and I'm now going to click on the read node and I'm going to go into that piece of footage that we had before. I'm going to select open. So as soon as I bring in that footage, you can clearly see that now my viewer is actually set to the correct frames. And this is because if I now press one to view the actual uh, player, if I now press play, you can clearly see that now it's only playing the 58 frames. By the way, this piece of footage is from the mill, so that you know, I'm, I should always credit from where it is. And this is from a project that I supervised a few years ago for the BBC. It's a music video called BBC God Only Knows. And this is, as you guessed it, Pharrell dancing down the stairs. Pharrell, by the way, was a really nice person on set. And he actually decided to shake the hands of every single person on set before he left, which was very impressive. That's not usually normal. And I'm sure I've heard from other people that have been supervising Pharrell that he's always been very nice to everyone. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is that if I go to my project settings, which is, by the way, on edit project settings, and you can also press the S button for it, you can see that now I have my range from 1001 to 158, which is the correct thing. And these are basically the defaults that he's picking up from the first piece of footage that he brought. Now, there's a little lock button here. If I unlock it, the next time I bring a piece of footage, it will basically grow to the frame range of that footage. So imagine if I bring a piece of footage that's 100 frames that starts at 100, then the range will change to that. Keep in mind that, that the range will always change to anything that you're importing. If you don't want it to do that, you can lock it, and then it will not do that anymore. Now, there's a couple of other things you want to keep in mind uh, for Nuke settings, and this, of course, is the most important thing to do when you start a project. You, you want to make sure you always have the correct settings before starting. So I would recommend you, when you start a composite, to start by bringing in the piece of footage, which is the master footage, which is basically the frame range of your entire comp. I know for a fact that this was shot at 24 frames per second, not 25. The reason it's changed to 25 is because I have my nuke uh, set to 25. The reason I have that is because my last project that I did uh, for Far Cry, which was a trailer for Far Cry, you might have seen it online, you can check it out as well. It's a quite cool trailer we did a few weeks ago. Both me and Bjorn did it. 
And, and that project was a 25 frames per second project. So I'm going to change this to 24 because I know it was 24. If you, when you uh, log in on Nuke for the first time, it will show up 24 and not 25. The other thing as well you have here is that this is actually the project settings for my project because, of course, I have a pipeline built in my company. And so it's picking up the resolution overhaul for everything. I know how much this, this footage has in terms of resolution. There are two places where I know the resolution of this piece of footage. One place is actually the viewer. As you can see on the top here, it says 2048 by 1536. That means that that's the resolution of this plate that I brought in. I also know this because if I double click on it, you can see on the read uh, node, it also says that this is actually a 248 by 1536. That's the format among all the template formats that Nuke would have. Inside of my project settings, you can clearly see that I have a frame uh, set format for my project. In this situation, it really depends on what resolution you're delivering. So imagine if you're delivering in HD or you're delivering in 4K, you should probably put your resolution to the delivery. Or if you want to work natively, you can also put the resolution to the native resolution. Now, of course, this will be discussed more and more in the upcoming classes, so don't worry too much about this. For the moment, I'm going to select the resolution that matches the resolution of my footage. And in that case, so that means I'm going to work natively. I know that it's 248 by 1536. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to choose the, the resolution that has that exact uh, uh, resolution. And that is actually this one, which is the 2 Super 45 full app. And as you can see now, I have the same resolution on my actual format of my settings, and I also have the same resolution on my read file. First, to talk about the rest of the interface and the navigation, I think it's wiser to have an actual comp. So I brought in here the actual composite of this shot, and I think it's much easier. So as we talked before, this would be down here. I'm just going to stop the playback here. This would be down here, your node graph. And at any time, if you want to look at your composite, you just hit the space bar. Now, if you want to zoom in, into your composite, there are two ways of doing it. You could, of course, use the plus and minus buttons on the keyboard. So if you do plus, uh, you zoom in, of course, and minus, you zoom out. The other way, of course, is to use the wheel of your mouse. So if you just like rotate the wheel of your mouse, you can actually do exactly the same thing. And if you're using a Wacom tablet, then it's a bit of a different thing. Uh, you basically will, uh, would want to click on the middle button, which I have assigned to the lower button. So you would click on the lower button of the Wacom tablet and uh, select the Alt button at the same time. And then as you do that, by clicking on the lower button, you can literally zoom in and zoom out by dragging your Wacom tablet through the surface. Just to give you a little heads up, I have changed my Wacom tablet to a different setting. So if you open up your uh, tablet settings, you can see that I have the right click on the top button and the middle click on the bottom button. The reason I have done this as opposed to the default is because in Linux, it is this, the default on Linux. And you tend to work in Linux on the majority of the companies in visual effects. And so I got used to this setup. Of course, you can change it as you want, but keep in mind that I'm when I'm talking about shortcuts, I'm gonna be talking with these two in mind, the right click on the top and the middle click on the bottom. So I'll just refer to them as middle click and right click, and that's probably easier for you to follow. As I said, Alt, middle click, and drag on the Wacom tablet zooms in just like the wheel. Now, if you want to pan sideways, then the only thing you need to do is again, hit the Alt button. Almost everything is with the Alt button. So you hit the Alt button and you can literally just do this. And this, of course, is the left button of the mouse uh, button when you drag. And of course, you can go up and you can go down and travel through your entire navigation of the script. Now, this is a node graph. This is what I was telling you about. Usually in Nuke, every single operation is one node. So as you can see, we go down to the, to the tree where we have a piece of footage, and then we have a transformation happening. Then we have a key. And as we go through it, every single effect or every single little thing that you do to the composite, like a kill spill or a color correction or a camera or a stabilization, or even if you want to just apply 
some different color correction or if you want to do some rotoscoping. Every single thing is one node, which nodes, of course, and categories of nodes, we're going to talk about them in a second. For the moment, we're just talking about the navigation. So now that we know how to pan and zoom, if I hit the spacebar again, you can do this exact same thing on the viewer. So if you click on the viewer and you hit spacebar, we can now use Alt and click to pan. We can use Alt and middle click to zoom in and zoom out on your viewer. And that means you can basically go really close if you want to check a pixel or an edge or a specific part of the composite that you that requires your attention. Or you can zoom out and see it as a small, small image. Now keep in mind if you wanna, if you lose yourself, like imagine if you lose the image by mistake by dragging too much, you can always press the button F and F will always center to the center of your image. And this will be the same on your node graph. So imagine if I'm on my node graph and I basically kind of get lost by going too far away, if I press the F button, it centers my entire node graph. When I zoom in as well, by the way, you can kind of see that when I zoom out, there is nothing happening on this corner. So you see there's nothing happening here. If I zoom in and I actually go beyond the boundaries of my script, you now see what we called a map. So the map, which you can also make it bigger or smaller if you want to, by clicking on the little, little corner on the side here, you can make it this big or you can make it that big, you can actually squeeze it or make it larger. And as you can see, there's like a little square. This is your field of view. That means I can actually use the map to travel through my script. So imagine that I'm really close and imagine that I'm working my way down. If I'm actually on this uh, specific image, I can now use the map to kind of drag myself down to a specific area of the script. So let's imagine that I want to go to this area here of the test comp, or if I want to go into my curtain. You probably also noticed when I select a node, it gets yellowed. And also the other thing that happens in the interface of Nuke is that all of the connectors light up. This means that this is actually going through this pipe. It's just so that you know what hits what. So if I select this transform node, you know that this transform node is intricately connected to all these nodes. And that's why you see yellow. The same, will go, the same goes if I go into here, for example, if I go into this area here, it highlights the entire path. So you can kind of see that the path is going this way, and then it goes that way, and then it goes this way, and goes into this node that I've selected. Please note that, for example, these nodes here are not highlighted because, of course, they are not connected to that pipe. And these nodes also are not highlighted. So, for example, if I select this node, it highlights everything in here but it doesn't highlight that. This is also a way that Nuke uh, tells you what's connected to what. So it's a really uh, interesting way of visualizing your composites.